Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here in Six Rivers National Forest near Willow Creek, California, and welcome to the studio. In today's episode of Creating Your First Altered Book, we are going to the country. Now last week we were in the city, we did a simplified cityscape, and then this week we go to the country. What a fun page it is to create. Now, I do want to do a quick conversation with you about color and how I was able to create this depth. And then as you watch the video, you can really see why I am choosing the colors that I do for the places that I do. Now, the only supplies that I really used, uh, I had deli sheets up here, um, but I ended up painting it over with some luminaire paints just because I wanted that perfect sunset feeling. The rest of this is scrapbook paper. I used some um, gel pens here for the white and for the black. I did use a little bit dark paint here and I did use my Arteza watercolor brushes to kind of take down a little bit of the sheen that I had from the luminaire paints that were up in here. Now the reason why I took down the sheen is because they needed to sit further back and so I took my blue Arteza watercolor brush and just kind of wiped over the top of it. But if you hold on here just a second, we're going to have a quick color conversation and it'll really go through and clarify for you why I use each paper where I did. It's cool stuff and it's not scary. And once you have the basic understanding, um, you know, you know that I talk about color a lot and how to create depth because it's so very, very important. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this quick, but it's hard because there's a lot to talk about. Um, and I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible for you. So ways that we can create depth. Well, first off, when we look at this, we can see that the warmer colors come in front and the bluer colors go to the back. They do. It's just how our eyes work. It's pretty cool. So um, I would suggest for everybody to grab a color wheel. I do have um, a link to this really nice set of color wheels um, on my Amazon links. Now, warmer tones are going to be these guys. Think of fire. Think of sunlight. You know, those are all warm tones oh, up in here. And your cool tones are going to be like water and uh, blues and purples. So those are important things to know. The warmer the color, the more it comes in front. That's pretty easy. Intensity of color will also create depth. So your most intense colors here will be, will pop. Whereas something that has a lower um, intensity, now this is shades that have black in them and tints have white in them. So a less intense shade will sit behind something that is more intense. So always kind of keep an eye out for intensity. And if you want to bring focus into something, that's where you would put the most intense color. Okay. Contrast of color is also very important. So low contrasting colors will go in the background. So here, let's look at these guys. So if you have cool tones in the background that have a low contrast, they're next to each other on the color wheel, those will sit in the back. Now, if you have a high contrasting color, which would be this color versus this color, or this color opposites on the color wheel, then high contrast will come forward. It's important to know, right? Also, there's a contrast of value. Mm, oh, that's a lot to think of. Well, not necessarily. So if you have something next to each other that is a white and a black versus a gray to a gray, so the white and the black will come forward, right? And here, a dark color next to a light color will bring it forward. It's, it's pretty simple. So don't get overwhelmed by the words. Just take it down to its basic color, okay? Contrast of complementary colors. Oh boy, complementary colors are opposite on the color wheel. So if you use something like this yellow and you put this purple right next to it, it's going to have a very high contrast and it's going to grab your eye to that spot, right? So here where I've used the blue, 
next to the orange is creating a high contrast of color. And this blue to this orange is a high contrast of color, right? But why would I put that back in the back? It's pretty simple. You put that back there because I want to lead your eye into the drawing. I want to lead your eye into the piece of art. So I have to have something there that brings you to that point, which is my focal area. Right? So you might think that the building is the focal, but I want to be sure that you go in correctly. What? I know, right? So other things, um, intensity of sheen, which that's the metallics. So these buildings had a metallic on them until I went over it with my um, blue Arteza pen. And I took down the sheen. And the reason why I did that was so that it would sit in the background better on this page. I had to kind of take down that intensity. Use of perspective, small to large. So the reason why this sits behind this, even though this is the same color as this, this is like the brightest color in here, it sits back here because it's smaller than these guys. So these had to be, you know, similar colors, but it had to be smaller in order to make sure that it sits in the background. Um, use of detail. So if something is blurry in the background versus high detail, high detail will bring it forward. So the most detail is in here because that is the most important part. But I didn't want it to be the first thing that you saw. So, you know, I've really played with the color here. And then intensity of pattern, which is mild to wild. So these are very mellow. And then these are much brighter, intense patterns. Mm -hmm. And colors. And um, so here the intense colors come forward versus the mild colors and patterns. Okay, well, that's your quick color explanation. Here's the video, and I'll most likely fast forward you through most of it so that you can just kind of watch me building it. And now that you know all the basics behind the color thought, you don't really need to hear all the stuff that I'm saying because it did take a couple hours, of course, to put this together. But think about color while you're doing it. All right, here's the video. We'll chat soon. Just pick out paper that you like. You know, there is no right or wrong with this. You do what you want to do. What I'm gonna do with this though, real fast, is uh, I am going to make that into a tree. Yes, I am. Let's see here, first we've got this, and we've got this. Nope. Close, well, it's almost just right. That'll get me close enough to where I can get it glued on. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to put that there.
All right. Oh, wait. Oh, well, that brings the red in from here. Mmm, I like that. Hold on. I like that. That brings in the sunset colors. I just need a small strip of this. Okay.
So somebody was saying that my dog whining means that my dog is not well trained or not happy. I guarantee you that Oz has been out this morning. <laughs> that he has had um, his chewy. That he's had water and food. And Oz is actually very well trained. When I do that, he, that's how he knows that he's allowed to come up and see me. And yes, I do wrestle with him a little bit because he's a puppy. And he's a big dog. And it makes him happy. He loves it. So if you think that my dog is misbehaved, no, he's not. He's actually a very good dog. What are you doing, kid? What are you doing? Mm. Oh. He's play biting. He is not biting hard. He's very soft. He knows no bites. He'll stop it immediately. He does pull the stuffing out of his toys. He has never chewed up anything. Not one single thing of mine, ever. It's very good. Huh, baby? <laughs> Hello, baby. Look at that. Wait, your smell? We're not going to go outside anymore. You need to lay down and take a nap now. I have to work. I have to work today. Yes, I've got three projects I have to do. Four. In a week. Less than a week. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm putting my hands in his mouth and on his face. That's how dogs are. Any <laughs> nibbles? He wants to play so bad. He did go for a run, so I'm not abusing my dog. And he's a good boy. Hello, artist. Good morning. Okay, let's finish this guy up. Um, just taking my Arteza watercolor brush here, and um, I've taken my paints. As you can see here, I color matched uh, that color of paint very nicely. And, um, you know, that part that I had closed the book and it came up. And here I'm just uh, using this watercolor brush kind of like a Stabilo. But Stabilo sometimes can get so muddy that I don't like to always use it. And this one I wanna keep kind of crisp. And I'm pushing these blues back in here because I think that they're uh, you know, going to set off the picture well. Now, where that paint is, it's gonna act differently than where it is on the Mod Podge. So just be aware of that when you're doing this, that if you don't have that smooth surface, it's gonna react differently. Now you can take a paintbrush with just some water on it, clean paintbrush, preferably. This is not a clean paintbrush. I really need to wash out my water, clean my brushes. It's a bad habit. It's a bad habit not to take care of your tools.
All right, guys, I'm just kind of finishing up the last little bits here. I really do love how this has turned out. I think it's really a gorgeous little mountain scene. It reminds me of my home. Yay! So, um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button. I really, really do appreciate it. Patreons, you will be getting the um, color rules that, that we talked about in the um, beginning of the video. And also, I'll go ahead and um, give you a little template on this house. And, um, you know, that way you can see how it was made. It was a great little project. I really did enjoy this immensely. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, if you do try out this project, please go on over to the Messy Hand Band of Artists over on Facebook and um, share your pictures. I want to see what you guys are doing. You do inspire me as much as I inspire you. So I love to see what you are making. All right, guys, have a great day and we'll chat soon.